Hi guys, this is Vin from SIBOR.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about Windows 8 storage space. I'm not expert in this, but I know how to use it so so. I guess whoever has no clue what this is might find this useful in their new future if he or she ever has such a need for the usage of Windows 8 storage space. Let's say it's not too bad to know about it now, so you might think about usefulness later. After all, using Windows 8 to its fullest potential is always a good thing and might be very productive for whatever you do, the things that you will do with your Windows 8 computer. Enough with the rant. Let's take a look at what is Windows 8 storage space, okay? So let me first take a fly over to Windows 8 storage space settings and we take a look at things there, okay? Okay, so this is how a storage space page looks like. The uh, I mean, here you can actually change the settings and add a storage pool, and then you know add storage space. So let me explain to you what a storage pool. What a storage pool is like a way you can combine different hard drives together, uh, whether that hard drives be a USB flash key or a a you know external hard drive or maybe even a uh, internal hard drives okay I mean internal hard drive yeah and then it can also be a uh, network attached storage uh, sort of drive so usually you know network attached storage is more like of a virtual storage or uh, virtual drive that acts like a in, an internal hard drive so the windows won't be able to tell the difference I mean the difference between a real drive and then a virtual drive because uh, it would thought, I mean the windows will might think that it is a real drive anyway because it could not tell the difference okay I mean the difference so basically what happened here is I'm going to click on, okay before I'm going to create a new pool uh, storage pool what I want to explain to you about storage space is that storage space is more like a virtual drive within Windows itself. So Windows A here can actually allow you to create virtual hard drive uh, that, that comes out from the storage pool basically. So first you combine a couple hard drives together to create a storage pool and then from there you can create a virtual drive from storage pool basically. So uh, since it's virtual drive, you can create more than the actual size of the storage pool. So let's uh, here is an example. Let's say you have uh, one, uh, I mean two different hard drives. Uh, each one is worth around 500 gigabyte, and so you combine two together. Now, if you use like um, array type of uh, configuration for your uh, storage pool then you might have only maybe 200 gigabyte worth of uh, st storage space for you to use. Now if you, you know, combine the drive together as one drive that without any kind of check, you know, parity check or whatever, you know, like redundancy measure within uh, the, com the configuration, so you won't have any type of array at all then you will basically create a com combination of two drives as one uh, and you mask them together and you have one big uh, hard drive uh, uh, in a, you know basically so in that combination let's say two, uh, two, two hard drives and each one worth around 500 gigabyte then you will combine both you will have like one terabyte right so basically from let's say storage space, if you create storage space within the storage pool of one terabyte, you can actually create, let's say you can create 10 terabyte virtual uh, storage space if you want to. You can create however large storage space you want to. Uh, it doesn't matter because it's a virtual hard drive from a pool. Now there is a dilemma here. If you create a large, a larger storage space than the storage pool, so uh, when your hard drive is filled up, right? Uh, I mean, when you store space, like get 
get larger than the storage pool uh, uh, in time. Uh, so basically, when you have enough data in storage space, that it will actually grow more than storage pool size. But when that happens, Windows will tell you that uh, your your storage pool is getting filled up. And now, if you don't actually add more drives to your storage pool, then your st then your storage pool, you know, the drives that are, that are inside your storage pool will be taken down, you know, will be taken down and then you cannot use them anymore and then you have to add more drives into it before you can manually actually, uh, I, I, I believe you can manually uh, re um, reactivate the storage pool, but I don't know because I haven't experienced that yet, so, uh, so from what I heard it might be difficult to do so, so, so my advice to you is that before storage pool get filled up, you add more, uh, either more um, hard drives internal hard drives, external hard drives, whatever, or even network drives into your storage pool so you can actually increase the size storage pool to handle the storage space, okay? Now, the better way to go about this is just create the same, I mean, if you, you, create, you create a smaller size of storage space and storage pool, and so there's no way that storage space can outgrow storage pool, and that way you don't really have to worry about the storage pool will be taken down uh, by accident, if you, know what, if you know what I mean. So anyway, um, let me show you the old way of creating uh, extend, extended hard drive uh, in Windows 7. Here, here, let me show you how. If you go to uh, search and tap in disk and then you just go to settings, click on create and format hard disk partitions. For example here, let me wait for this to load up first. Let's say if I have, I scroll down and I see that I have a, a disk number 12 here uh, that I haven't used, and then I right click on that and that's, I, I can create, let, let's say, um, you know, extend volume right here. If you click on extend volume, it means like you're going to combine this, this hard drive or with another hard drive together uh, as a single one. Uh, without any, uh, you know, redundancy check or parity check or whatever, you know, without any array type of configuration. So, uh, if one hard drive fail, um, the data you will uh, you will lose the data from both hard drive that you combine together. Okay, so that's why uh, Windows 8 is a, a little bit, you know, more sophisticated in a way that it allows you to add array type of configuration for different uh, drives together to create storage pool. Um, and then you can create a, a virtual uh, storage space from the storage pool, so it's kind of fun that way. Uh, it's, it's better in a, in the sense that you, if let's say if you combine two drives together in, with, in a t array type of configuration, and um, if something wrong with, uh, with one of the drive, then the data is already uh, being duplicated in another in the other drive, and you won't lose data. Uh, you, all you have to do is just replace the broken drive with a new drive, and then you will have, uh, and then the the array will automatically, you know, um, reconfigure the lost data. Uh, you know, from I, I mean, like by copying the lost data from the uh, the the data that was was duplicate. I mean, were duplicated into the other drive. You know, so it recreate the the lost data basically, so you won't lose any data. Anyhow. Um, let me create a new storage pool for you to see, okay? I click on the create storage pool on the left hand side and now it, it comes up with the uh, it shows me the list of available hard drives I can use uh, uh, to combine them to get in the storage you know, uh, pool. So basically I'm just going to use um, this one right here, this external hard drive that I have that I don't do anything with it and then um, I have another one right here, which is the uh, network uh, attached storage virtual hard drive that I have right here. Uh, I just created a one terabyte. The other one is uh, around 600 gigabyte worth of the uh, um, you know storage space right there. I combine them together to uh, to create a pool. Okay. I click on create pool to create them together. It says right here the following drives might contain files. If you use a format drive with a storage pool, Windows permanently deletes all the files on that drive. You cannot recover these files 
by using the recycle bin. So remember, when you're creating a storage pool, make sure the drives that ha that uh, that has data, I mean the drives that have data on there, on them, you you have to back uh, the data up, okay, before you actually create storage pool. Otherwise, you will lose data for sure. So now we're creating a storage pool drive right now. Okay, so now it already created a pool for me, right? So, the, so I have a brand new storage pool right now. Now I have uh, a, um, a decision to make right here. Okay, so what type of storage space do I want to create from the storage pool, okay? So the name I want to let's say it want me to create it want it wants me to create a new storage space for the storage pool because once you have a storage pool you need to have at least one storage space to make it useful okay because storage pool is just a combination of drives together and you need to have a storage space basically so like I said earlier you can create a really large storage space or you know a small store storage space depending on what you want to do with the storage pool. To create too large, you might accidentally uh, fill the storage pool and overfill. I mean, overfill the storage pool, and then you will have. I mean, Windows will uh, automatically taking uh, will take down the storage pool altogether, and then you will have a hard time to put it. Uh, you know, to reactivate the uh, storage pool, basically. So it's it's good that you should be able. To, I mean, it's good that you should create a smaller storage space than your storage pool, or either either the same size. A storage uh, pool and, and not over creating, you know, a too large of a storage space, you know. Okay, so I will name the storage space as WinShare 2, okay. And then the drive letter, I will just pick one, okay. So I'm just going to pick W. And then here is the resiliency type. Uh, you can create two way mural. Okay, depending on which type you uh, you pick, because uh, the, the type that you pick will actually uh, dictate how fast the uh, read and write uh, speed of your data, I mean read and write data speed that you will have. Let's say if you create two weight mirror type, then basically uh, you will have faster write, write speed and read speed than if you create a parity type, okay? Three way mirror, mirror type um, might be, might actually be even faster than two way mirror type. I'm not sure. 100% sure on that, but uh, you can actually check that out on Google, okay? If you create a, a simple no resiliency, I think this is the fastest one because uh, it just combined two drives together. Uh, I mean, uh, in a way that, I mean, not two drives together, it, it's just like um, configuring uh, your storage space in a way that it, it will not create any, uh, you know, extra volume inside a storage space to, you know, do any data duplication, you know, and anything like that, you know, so you won't have, you know, extra write and extra read and so on, you know. So it just write and read one pass, so I think so that's why it's faster than, you know, if you have to, uh, you know, a bunch of write and read, you know, in the background to compete against each other just to create extra data, uh, redundancy data, I mean redundant data, if you know what I mean, so to create more, uh, uh, sort of like more, uh, the data to be more resilient, you know, if you, if you know what I mean. So basically, uh, I'm going to create a simple no resiliency because 
uh, why am, am I doing that? Because I have two different uh, size of drives. Because the first one is only 600 gigabyte worth of uh, this space, and the second one is one terabyte. Now, if I combine that into Way Miro, then I will only have like uh, uh, the lowest denominator, denominator, which is the 600 gigabyte worth of data space that I, I can use. And then, when you're done configuring to Way Miro type, it will actually be less than that. Um, so, if you create three Way Miro type, then perhaps uh, even less space you will have, you know, than two way mirror type, I think. I don't know about parity though. If you create simple no resiliency, uh, if one of, uh, if some data that, I mean, if, if one of the uh, drive that uh, goes wrong, I mean, uh, go, goes bad, or, you know, cor gets corrupted, then you will have, I mean, you will lose the data completely from both drives, okay? So basically, I'm going. I'm going to create simple no resiliency. Okay, and then from here, I don't care because this one, this driver here, I'm, I'm not going to worry about my data to be. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to put any critical data on this driver right here. I mean, this uh, storage space right here. So I don't have to worry about the resiliency of, uh, of the data. Okay, and then uh, since I picked simple no resiliency, as you can see down here, it's like it's this. They combine the the drive size, the combination. Um, the drive side, the two, uh, the two drives combination together is, is equal to uh, 1.5 terabyte. Okay, so if I pick two-way mirror, then you can see that the size maximum size I can have is only 800 gigabyte. Um, even though I have, uh, I suppose to have like 1.5 terabyte um, because it's used the other maybe um, 700 or 800 worth of gigabyte for. Um, yeah, around that, yeah. Uh, for you know, for for you know, data duplication and so on, so your data can be more resilient, basically. So now, let's say if we pick three way mirror, then you you will have less, even even less size of this space to to be uh, to use, you know. And then if you use uh, parity, then you have like around one terabyte, basically. Um, parity is very slow in read and write, I believe. I forgot which one is slower, read or write, but the, it has the worst performance of read and write, uh, you know, in in all together, I mean, uh, when comparing to the other types, you know, a resilient type of data, you know. So I'm, I'm just going to use the simple, okay. And then I'm just going to create a storage space right here. Click on that. And now it's creating a new storage space for me. Uh, it will be uh, in drive letter W, okay. Okay, so now we have a new storage space to use. Uh, do not scan. Okay. So storage pool. I have two storage pool now. Uh, one is um, the first one, the, the original one I have. The second one is the new one right here, WinShare 02. And now if I go to my um, computer. A file explorer. I mean Windows Explorer here, and now I see that I have a new drive letter, so that so I can save uh, files in, uh, and data too, basically. And if I go to computer, I will see that drive letter W will worth around uh, will be worth around. Let's see where is it like 1.5. Four terabyte of uh, this space, okay. All right, let's let us create a simple data in there to, to test it out, okay? Uh, by going to data w new folder miss cell. There we go, and then we just can go in here and create new file, whatever. I just type in something, you know, like that, and I just save. So since I think this um, storage space right here I just created is pretty slow because I had one of the um, the drive that I combined with the network drive, uh, the, the the one that I combined with the network drive is the 
uh, external hard drive and that external hard drive is really slow and so um, if you combine a really slow drive with a fast you know drive like a network drive um, you know you won't gain any benefit of using the fast drive with a slow drive basically because slow drive will actually be a hinder to the, the fast drive okay so it's a bottleneck if you have a slow drive that you combine with a fast drive so I suggest you try to combine the same type of drives together uh, basically let's say if you have two fast drives then you should combine two fast drives together to maximize the potential of using the speed of the two drives and then now if you have like or two slow drives drives then you should combine combine the two slow drives together instead of you know combine the uh, the mismatch one you know like the slow one and the fast one like I'm doing right now um, okay um, let me go back to store space one more time just to show you something else let's say since you already create around 1.5 terabyte uh, worth of storage space in this storage pool and we know that the storage pool only half I mean the storage pool only has around 1.5 terabytes uh, at a maximum right but it doesn't matter really you can actually create more storage space or you can change it you basically you can change it yeah you can add the drives you add more drives there uh, I mean to a, a storage pool or you can rename the pool or you can delete the pool altogether or you can actually create more storage space I believe um, yeah you can create another storage space from the same storage pool even though storage pool has only uh, 1.5 terabyte in my case right here I actually can create like another 1.5 terabyte of storage space uh, this is dangerous because if my second storage space and my first storage space uh, each one is worth around 1.5 terabyte if both of them fill up to some certain, I mean, to a certain extent, and both of them can combine together to create to create even a larger uh, demand of a storage pool. Then basically, it will overfill, uh, you know, over fill the storage pool, and then uh, the windows will actually complain uh, about storage pool is getting fill up. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you like it. If you like it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye bye.